Zionism is a nationalist movement that insisted on the need to build a Jewish state in Palestine and the establishment of a Jewish state as the only way to avoid persecution while living under anti-Semitic oppression in Europe. Zionism began in earnest in 1896 when the Dreyfus incident, in which Dreyfus was targeted as a Jew in France, shocked the public with the anti-Semitism of the French crowd who criticized Dreyfus and the Viennese journalist Theodore Hussle wrote a book called The Jewish State. Completely assimilated into European culture, he confessed in his book that he had converted to a Jewish nationalist and argued that Jews had no choice but to separate and establish a Jewish state in order to avoid persecution. While there had been such arguments before, this book was the catalyst for the Zionist movement. For reference, Zion is the name of a mountain in Jerusalem, the holy city of Judaism, and it signifies the people of Israel, heaven, and utopia. So the Jews decided to establish a Jewish state in Palestine, where Jerusalem is located. In the past, Arabs and Jews in Palestine had been living well together. But the issue was that Jews were opening their eyes to Zionism due to persecution in Europe. In the meantime, the Arab people in the Palestinian region ruled by the Ottoman Empire were also awakening to Arab nationalism. Arab nationalism is an ideology that asserts that Arabs are one nation and aims to unite Arabs. This ideology praises Arabic culture, language, and literature, and advocates for the revival and political unity of the Arab world. Arab nationalism is based on the main premise that Arab peoples from the Atlantic Ocean to the Indian Ocean form a single nation, united by a common ethnicity, language, culture, history, identity, geography, and politics. A major goal of Arab nationalism is to end Western influence in the Arab world. The goal of Arab nationalism is to see the West as the enemy of the Arab world and to eliminate Arab governments that are considered to be dependent on the West. Arab nationalism which emerged as an important ideology after the dissolution and division of the Ottoman Empire in the early 20th century, declined after the Arab army was defeated in the Six-Day War. It can be said that the unhappy relationship between Jews and Arabs actually started from this point on. After World War II, the United Nations proposed dividing Palestine into Jewish and Arab states. The Jews agreed to the UN agenda, and on May 14, 1948, Israel was founded. But that night, Egyptian fighters bombed Israel sparking the first Middle East war. Egypt attacked from the south, Jordan and Iraq from the east, and Syria and Lebanon from the north. Israel looked like it would soon lose the war and collapse. But with American support, the Israeli army transformed into a modern army, bombed Cairo and Egypt, Amman in Jordan, and Damascus in Syria under the command of General Moses Dayan. In the end, 
the Arab allies could not resist and surrendered. The First Middle East War ended with the signing of a peace treaty in February 1949 with the Israel's victory. Egypt's Gamal Nasser, who seized power through the July Revolution of 1952, declared the nationalization of the Suez Canal in commemoration of the fourth anniversary of the revolution, depriving Britain and France of all rights to the canal. Against this, in October 1956, Britain and France signed a secret agreement with Israel. There was a scenario in which Israel attacked Egypt first, and Britain and France intervened and took control of the Suez Canal. October 29, 1956, Israeli forces advanced across the Sinai Peninsula in the Suez Canal, and the next day Britain and France sent an ultimatum to Egypt to attack Port Said at the canal entrance. After a week of fighting, Israel was victorious, but Britain and France were criticized by the international community for waging a war of aggression. In particular, the move was criticized by the United States and Britain and France eventually withdrew from the Suez Canal at the end of the year due to economic pressure from the United States. Even after losing in this war, Nasser became an Arab hero. The difficulties Israel encountered in the early days of its founding were mainly due to its neighboring Arab states, but from 1964, it faced a new situation. The Palestine Liberation Organization, PLO, led by Yasser Arafat, was born, and guerrilla activities in the Arab world were gradually strengthened. This development meant that the Palestinians, who were dependent on their Arab neighbors, began taking up arms to reclaim their territories for themselves. In addition, Jordan and Egypt were preoccupied with arms purchases in order to prepare for a decisive battle with Israel. In May 1967, Egypt's Nasser demanded that the UN peacekeepers stationed in the Sinai Peninsula withdraw and then blockade the Strait of Tehran with a bleach. A month later, Israel launched a preemptive strike against Egypt, Jordan, and Syria. The Third Middle East War broke out. The Arab world, devastated by the surprise attack, surrendered without lasting a week. As a result of the war, Israel gained control of the Gaza Strip, the Sinai Peninsula, the West Bank of Jordan, and the Golan Heights in Syria. In addition, Israel joined hands with the United States to weaken the influence of the Soviet Union in the region, and on the other hand, as an occupying power, it came under the eyes of Europe as well as the United Nations. After Nasser's death in 1970, Sattar took over as Egypt's third president. He disrupted Israel by enforcing a right-leaning policy, including privatization of nationalized businesses and access to the United States. 
however, Sadat closed the Suez Canal and attacked the Israeli base on October 6, 1973, using Soviet-made weapons in order to gain the Sinai Peninsula lost during the Third Middle East War. In addition, Syria also advanced by mobilizing its army to retake the Golan Heights. The early days of the war were in favor of the Arab allies, and Israel suffered heavy casualties. However, through the efforts of Israeli Prime Minister Goldmeier, the United States provided massive support to Israel, and the war ended with the announcement of a ceasefire on October 25th. As a result of the war, Egypt partially regained the Sinai Peninsula, and later, in the late 1970s, through additional agreements, Egypt fully regained the Sinai Peninsula. But Syria still has not reclaimed most of the Golan Heights. At the same time, the first oil shock occurred. Six countries in the Persian Gulf, Iran, Iraq, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and the United Arab Emirates raised the official price of oil per barrel by 70%. Five countries, excluding Iran, drastically raised the prices by 70% and reduced oil production by 25% in order to use oil as a weapon against the West. After the Second Judeo-Roman War, which occurred in 132, ended with the suppression of King Hadrianus, the Jew lived in the era of exile in earnest, and in the process, they were constantly persecuted by Christian forces for 2,000 years. Conversely, the Ottoman Empire was defeated in the Battle of Vienna in the late 17th century after Islam was founded in the early 7th century. It has a history of being constantly invaded and largely succumbed to Muslim forces for a thousand years before giving the hegemony of Central Europe to the Austrian Habsburgs. However, after 100 years of transition, at the end of the 18th century, when Napoleon conquered Egypt, Islam was completely dominated by Christian forces. Since then, for about 200 years, the history of the Middle East can be seen as going through a period of retaliation for the thousand-year invasion of Europe. The only thing that has changed is that the Jews, who had previously opposed Christianity along with Islam, joined the Christian forces while founding Israel in 1948, and together with them, dominate the Islamic forces to this day. In the Dreyfus Affair, French artillery Captain Dreyfus was accused of being a spy because of the militarism, anti-Semitism, and obsessive patriotism that swept France in the late 19th century after the Franco-Prussian War. However, in French society at the time, it was a political scandal in which the Dreyfus faction, who insisted on his innocence, and the anti-Dreyfus faction, who insisted on his guilt, fought fiercely. And the Dreyfus affair refers to a representative case of human rights violation and espionage manipulation committed by state. Power. Thank you for watching the video, The Middle East War Provided by History and Current Events. I'm Rebecca Mia Katie.
Leah and Tony have contributed so far as narrators. Thank you.